Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we have seen what are Databricks utilities, which are also known as dbutil commands. Today, we are going to use some of those dbutil commands in order to parameterize our notebooks. Now, parameterizing notebooks is the first step towards designing workflows. Today, we are going to use this parameterization technique in order to just run a simple notebook as a job. So, without any delay, let's begin. I am in my Databricks workspace. Today, we are going to use two notebooks. The first one would be a child notebook, which will be named as write employee data. Okay. And the second one would be a parent notebook, which is run write employee data. Now, in our child notebook, we are going to read some employee records, filter them out based on the parameter provided, which would be on department. And once the data is filtered, we are going to write them in form of delta tables. So for any parameterized department, we are going to write it into a different delta table. Now, we will use this parent notebook in order to pass the parameters to the child notebook, which will run as a job. So this demonstration is pretty simple and my computer is also up and running. Let's go ahead and write the code. So for today's demonstration, we are going to read some employee records from this location. Now this location is also available for you. You can read the data from the same location. So I'll just copy this and I will use the dbutils head command in order to see the data. So I'll write dbutils.fs.head and I'll pass the path for that particular CSV file. So let me run this. Awesome, we can see the dataset. It has a header which gives you all the information about this CSV dataset. The next step is to create the widget in order to read the parameter that we will provide from our parent notebook. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a parameter called department. Now we already have seen how we can use widgets for this. Let's go ahead and do this. So I'll write dbutils.widgets.text. So this would be a text and the name of this text would be dpt department. And I'll just keep the default value as blank and I'll give it a label called department name. Okay, let me just go ahead and run this. Great, we see our widget with the text box created at the top. Okay, now we will create one variable in order to get the value of this widget. So to do that, I'll use a variable called underscore dept and we will use again the dbutils.widgets.get command and we'll pass the name of the widget which is department. So I'll rest dept. Okay, and I'll run this. So this will help us to get the value, whatever is passed in the department name. Okay. And then we are going to print this. So we'll just print it as print DEPT, whatever value that we get for this particular widget. Now, in order to test it out, let me just put as sales. Okay. And I'll hit enter. So you can see both the sale ran automatically. Let me just go ahead and run the print command and you can see sales. Okay. Now let's read the data set that we have already seen in our first command, right? So to do that, I'll just write df equals to spark dot read dot CSV. And I'll pass the path of the employee file. So I'll just go ahead in the top. I'll copy the path. Come back. And I'll paste it here. Okay. And since it has a header, so I'll pass a parameter called header. That's true. Okay. Let me just run this. So if I expand this, you can see all the columns. Okay. Let's go ahead and see the data. So I'll just type display and I'll pass the DF. Awesome, we can see the data, right? And we can see the department column as well. It has a lot of departments for sales, office. And again, if I scroll down, you can see production. On the right hand side, you can see a column called active record. And we are also going to use this in the filter. So we're going to also filter out only active records. So we'll put the filter as active record equals to one. Okay. So we have seen the data set that we are going to read. Okay. Let's go ahead and filter out the data now. So in order to filter, I'll just create a new data frame called DF filtered. And I'll use df dot where now I will use the filter for department. Okay. And I'll write department is equals to I'll again use upper function. So if there is a value passed in a different case in our parameter, it will automatically make it upper in order to match. Okay. And I'll use this and I'll wrap it around a single quote because this is a string and I'll pass in the parameter which is dept. Okay. Now if you see curly brace here, you must know that I'm using f string here. That is why I put curly braces in order to pass in the variable in python okay and i'm going to use and active record filter is equals to one which is also string okay let me go ahead and run this so if i run this right now and expand i can see all the columns because right now the department value is sales this is why it is showing you okay so let's go ahead and validate so what i'll do is i'll just write display and i'll write df filtered awesome you can see data and the, this is for department sales okay now let's go ahead and write the data, but we have to check whether the values, whatever we pass in for the department is greater than zero or not. If greater than zero, then only we are going to write it as a table. If not, then we are not going to write anything. Okay. So first let's capture the count. So I'll use a variable called count 
and I'll capture df filtered dot count. Okay. Now I'm going to use a if statement. So I'll write if underscore count is greater than zero, then only we are going to write it. Okay. So I'll use df filtered dot write dot mode and I'm going to make it overwrite so that if we run it again and again, it will overwrite the data. And I'm going to save this as table. Okay. So I'll write save as table. Now, again, we are going to write dynamic tables with the name of the department, right? So I'm again going to use f string for this. And we are going to write the data in dev catalog. Okay. So I'll use dev dot branch dot again, I'll use the curly braces and I'll write before that, I'll add DEPT and then the department variable, which is DEPT. Okay, so this is done. Great. We are writing the data now. Let me just add a print statement here saying that we have written the data. So I'll write print data written for, and again, I'll use the curly brace with underscore DPT variable and I'll make it F string. Okay. Now in the else statement, I'll write print no data for, and I'll use again DPT. Okay, and I'm going to make it F. Okay, let me go ahead and run this. Awesome, you can see the output as data written for sales. Okay, so our table should also be created as dev.branch.dept underscore sales. Okay, so let's go to the catalog. Let's expand the dev, then branch, and under tables, we should have a dept sales table. Okay. Let's validate the data as well. So what I'll do is rather than validating here, I'll add that statement here itself. So I'll write as display and we are going to view the data. Okay. So I'll write spark dot table in order to read the table. Okay. And inside this, I'll copy this whole statement from here. So what it will do is after writing the table, it will display the table to us. Okay. So let's rerun this because this is an overwrite. So nothing should happen. Let's rerun this. Great. Now, if you see, we can see the data as well, right? And it has also written data written for sales. Great. So our code is almost ready. But before we wrap up, we do one more thing. So we are going to pass out the number of records that we have written to the parent notebook. Now, we also know from our last video that notebook has two commands, right? So you can just write dbutils.notebook.help and you can see both the command. Run is to run a notebook. Exit is to provide an exit status or a value to the parent notebook. Okay. So we are going to use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the total number of records to the parent notebook. Okay. So I'm going to pass the underscore count to the parent notebook so that we can also use that in our parent notebook to do some manipulation. Okay. So this is also done. So our code is ready. So our child notebook is ready. Let's go to our parent notebook in order to trigger this code with different parameters. Okay, I'm in my parent notebook, which is run write EMP data. Okay, so we are going to pass different parameters from this notebook in order to run our child notebook. Let's connect it to the cluster. So I'll click on this and I'll select our ease with data cluster. Okay, now it is connected. Now we know that in order to run a notebook, we can always use the dbutils command. So I'll write dbutils dot notebook dot run. So we will use this to run our child notebook. So the first thing that we need to pass to run command is the name or the path of the notebook. Okay. Since we are at the same location, so we'll just pass the name of the notebook, which is write EMP data. Okay. Now, if this notebook is at a different location, then you have to provide that complete location along with the notebook name. Okay. So the next parameter is the timeout seconds. Okay. So I'll keep it for 600. And the third is the parameter that we need to provide. Now, the name of our parameter in our child notebook was DEPT. Okay. So we need to provide the value from here. In order to provide the value, you have to use a dictionary. So you can just write curly braces. And inside this, you can pass in the parameter name first. So for DEPT, we need to provide, for example, sales. Okay. So if I run this now, it will pass the value sales to the parameter department of the child notebook write EMP data. Okay, so this is how you pass in the parameter. Now, if you have more than one parameter, you can always put a comma and you can pass in different parameters. But for our child notebook, since there is only one parameter, so we'll pass department with the value sales. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. Awesome. Now, if you see, it says notebook workflows. So this is creating a job with that notebook path. So if you see this, this is the notebook path it has used in order to run the job. So if I click on the start time now, Great. Now, if you see, it is running that notebook as a job. On the left hand side, you can find all the sales it is running for that particular notebook. Okay. So if I scroll down, you can find it has filtered the data, then it has written the data. Okay. 
and then it has given an exit status with 51 because that is the count for the sales department okay on the right hand side you can see the details about the cluster that it has used now it is the same cluster that you have used for the parent notebook okay the parent notebook will use the same cluster in order to run the child notebook okay again you can find different informations like details of the cluster spark ui logs and metrics here and the most important is the parameters so this is where it says what all parameters were passed to the notebook which has run okay so on the left hand side you can find all the cells which has run for the child notebook and on the right hand side all the information about the job run okay so our job completed and the duration was 21 seconds let's go back to the parent notebook so on our parent notebook we can see it says succeeded and here you can see it says 51 so the value that we have used in our child notebook to exit is printed out here so we can also capture this using a variable so let's use a variable called count in order to capture that count okay so now whatever is the value of that exit status will be captured under count okay and we are going to print a statement here and say child notebook count and we are going to use the f string again for the count variable okay now let's do it for a different department so what i'll do is i'll write a department called office and let me run this great it is running the job again let's see the job great on the left hand side you can see all the cells that are being triggered if i scroll down on the bottom you can see it is still triggering the exit status okay it, this particular cell is running so i think the status is complete it has given an exit status of 200 means there are 200 records and it says succeeded let's go back to the plan notebook and again it says succeeded and if i scroll down now and if i trigger this statement it says child notebook count 200 okay now let's go ahead and check if the table has been written or not okay so i'll go back to the catalogs on the left i'll expand dev and branch and i'll expand tables and here you can see dept office okay so we can see that our code is working fine and now you know how you can parameterize notebooks in order to run and you can also use notebooks to trigger different notebooks as simple workflows great before we wrap up there's one more thing now you can also schedule this notebook now how to schedule notebooks you can go ahead and on the right hand corner you can see the schedule button you can click on this and you can write a job name here okay now you can schedule how often you want to run this notebook so you can schedule like for example if you run it every day or every eight days okay and then you can select the cluster that it has to use for running okay you can select to create a new cluster or any existing all-purpose cluster okay and under more options you can see the notifications so it has to send notification on failure on success on start okay and again you can pass in different parameters from here for example let's go to the child notebook and if i click on schedule here and if i click on more options you can see it gives you an option called department here in the parameters right so you can use this parameters in order to schedule a job as well so you can always schedule your notebooks as well if you want to run them every day or on a different frequency now if you click on advanced you get more options for example you get the time zone and also any cron syntax that you want to use okay so in linux cron is used to schedule things right so you can also use those cron syntax in order to schedule your notebook jobs so this was pretty much all but the main thing is now you know how to use widgets in order to parameterize a notebook so that we can create complex workflows passing in different parameters this was all for today in our next video we are going to learn something about clusters till then keep learning keep growing and keep sharing